more buildings are collapsing. Dangerous construction is everywhere in China. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Surfshark. You should be using a VPN like Surfshark to protect yourself whenever you go online. So nothing exemplifies the Chinese dream like owning a home. And nothing exemplifies the Chinese reality like having that home collapse on you. A week ago, a seven-story apartment building collapsed here in China's Hunan province. Videos of the rubble have been circulating online. The collapse wasn't caused by an earthquake. It was the result of poor construction. In China, buildings are built fast, but not to last. It's what's called tofu dreg construction. Basically, when so many corners are cut during the construction process, that buildings are unstable and unsafe. I talked about tofu dreg construction in an episode a few months ago, about exploding manhole covers, and again in a recent episode about giant sinkholes. I keep bringing it up because problems caused by poor construction happen all the time in China. And while it's funny when you see a KFC awning falling to the ground, the truth is it actually puts a lot of Chinese people at risk. Poor construction in China is a byproduct of widespread corruption. We've seen this for a long time. In 2016, this building suddenly fell over in Guangxi province. But now, the Chinese Communist Party tells people it's cracking down on corruption. They say tofu dreg construction is a thing of the past. But like many things the Communist Party says, that's a lie. The one that collapsed last week was built only two or three years ago. There were 10 families living there. Local Chinese news outlets seem to have quickly deflected responsibility from authorities. They didn't disclose much information about the building, aside from calling it self-built. It's like the Communist Party's motto. If you want something done wrong, do it yourself. I'm not actually sure what it means for a seven-story apartment building to be self-built. But regardless, the collapse was a tragedy. Chinese state-run CGTN says five people were killed. But with a propaganda emphasis on the rescue. Twelve people were trapped, seven of which were pulled from the rubble and are being treated at local hospitals. The same week, Another building collapsed, this one in Jilin province. One person was reported to be trapped in the rubble of an auto repair house that suddenly collapsed during rainfall. And also, in the same week, another tragedy in Fujian province. Nine people were killed and seven others injured at a banquet after a brick wall fell from the roof of a residential building. On June 21st in Chongqing, Five people were injured in an elevator explosion. Videos were shared of people trembling as they walked with their clothes completely burnt and torn off their bodies. Is that security officer just going to stand there and watch? Problems like these are not only caused by tofu dread construction. Another factor is poor maintenance. Inspectors can be bribed to look the other way. A lot of Chinese citizens don't trust official safety certifications. In Wuhan last month, flammable gases underground caused this. And not too long after that, a natural gas pipe exploded in Wuhan. It injured more than 130 people and killed an estimated 25. That explosion was too large of an incident to be ignored by the Chinese Communist Party. So they started rolling out punishments for anyone who could be deemed responsible. An initial investigation found the company affiliated with China Gas a gas operator that provides natural gas and liquefied petroleum gas to residents and businesses, did not strictly perform gas pipeline patrols and checks as required, and there were serious flaws in the operation of related facilities. And so, Chinese leader Xi Jinping got directly involved to stop this kind of thing from happening. Xi Jinping instructed all localities to investigate potential safety hazards, maintain the overall stability of their society, and create a good atmosphere for the 100-year anniversary of the Communist Party of China. In other words, local officials should focus on making things look good 
and covering up any incidents. The Chinese Communist Party has been hyping themselves up for their big anniversary on July 1st. As my favorite Chinese state-run media, the Global Times, writes in English, a wide range of works, including films, television dramas, operas, documentaries, and animated works, will be produced to celebrate Mark this important occasion time. You know, if they want to make their anniversary look good, they should hire a proofreader. But I hope everyone in China enjoys the pageantry. They can even watch the fireworks from the street, because their home collapsed. And this episode is sponsored by Surfshark. When you go online, you need to be using a VPN, like Surfshark, to protect your identity. Everything you do online is being tracked and logged by the websites you visit and your internet service provider, and in many cases by the government. And if you're in an authoritarian country like China, this kind of tracking can put you at risk of surveillance and even arrest. So I recommend you use Surfshark to protect yourself online. When you use Surfshark's clean web mode, you'll be protected from trackers plus a lot of ads and malware. With one account, you can connect as many devices as you want. Try it out with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And Surfshark has a special discount for China Uncensored fans. Go to Surfshark.com Uncensored and use the code Uncensored to get our special deal that includes three extra months for free. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. Thank you.